I'm going to talk about how to use SIFT to do object recognition. So recall that SIFT stands for Scale Invariant Feature Transform. And it's a way to extract uh, features from images that are invariant to scale and rotation. Um, so it involves a, uh, the object recognition will, will have a training phase where we have one or more training images of an object. We'll extract SIFT features from those images and put them into a database. In the testing phase, uh, we extract SIFT features from a test image. We match them to features in the database, find a subset of matches that may be mutually consistent, and calculate a transformation from the training image to the test image. So uh, just a brief review of SIFT. It involves creating a scale space of images that are progressively uh, blurred with a Gaussian, taking differences to get a difference of Gaussian pyramid, and looking for a local extrema in the scale space. Um, so those are key points, uh, those extrema points. And then for each key point, uh, it calculates a um, uh, histogram of gradient directions in a window surrounding that key point. So it's a very rich descriptor uh, of feature vector. So I'm going to show the use of a software package that is available on this website. Um, it's uh, all you need to do is download it and put it in a directory and then um, run this uh, setup command one time. So the main functions I'll use is vlsift, which extracts sift features from an image, and then vlubc match, which matches two sets of features. And I'll also use these functions to display sift features. I'll also use, um, as, as an example, these images from this website, um, ac.uk, UK, um, consisting, here's a bunch of training images of five objects and a bunch of test images containing those objects. Uh, normally we would have, we may want multiple training images of each object, for example, from different viewpoints. For example, this box has, uh, we just have an image of one of the faces, but we might want to have images of, of all the faces of the box. Okay, so the way I'll extract SIFT features is to call VLSIFT. This will return arrays F and D, where uh, D is the actual descriptors, the 128 element descriptors, and F is a sort of summary of the descriptors in terms of X, Y, scale, and angle. So this is some MATLAB code <coughs> to read um, one of those um, training images Oops, called uh, Book 1. And uh, there's some parameters you can play with on the SIFT call. I'll just use the, the defaults here. So this is the um, features, the SIFT features that were extracted from that image. There's 1,800 of them. So each yellow circle represents a feature, and the size of the circle is the scale of the feature. And then also we have the uh, align segment indicating the orientation of the descriptor. Um, just to look at one of the features, we'll pick one of them, say feature 100, and display it, um, and just see what it what it looks like. So feature 100 turns out to be this point right here, and this is kind of interesting. It shows the neighborhood around the descriptor that was used to calculate the descriptor. So these are the uh, gradient orientations in each of the bins around the descriptor. Actually, I don't think the the array is um, actually tilted. It's actually uh, registered horizontally and vertically. They've just tilted the array to show you the orientation. So we'll extract the features from another image, say a test image, doing the same way. These are the features extracted from that. And there's uh, 1,100 in this image. So this test image has the object that we're looking for right here. So it should find it there. The matching phase will call the VLUBC match to match those two sets of descriptors. Uh, this will return the indices of the matching features in this thing called matches. So match matches of one is the index of the feature in the first image, and matches two is the index in the second image. 
So this is the code for that. Um, this also has a uh, parameter you can adjust to get more or less uh, matches. And oh, the way it matches is using the Euclidean distance between the two sets of features. So it wants a small distance <coughs> compared to the uh, matching distances to all the other features. So what we're going to get is um, a set of potential matches. These are just based on the local appearance of the similarity of a local appearance. So many may be incorrect and there's no notion yet of mutual consistency of the feature matches. Just to display it, um, I'm going to show the display um, as a bunch of line segments connecting the uh, corresponding features and labeling them with their index. So here we turned out to have 25 matching features. Um, you can see that uh, the ones over here look correct, but the ones here are, are not correct. So how do we test for consistency? Well, if we can find a rigid transformation that aligns the two sets of features with a low error residual, then they're probably consistent. How to find the subset? We could use RANSAC, Random Sample Consensus, but that doesn't work very well. It's very inefficient if we have a lot of outliers, which it looks like we do there. So instead, we'll use a clustering technique like a Huff transform. So potential matches will vote for poses in the space of all possible poses. And then we'll look for the bin with the highest number of votes. And that will be the probably the correct pose that we're looking for. Um, and then we can refine the uh, transformation using um, a, a different technique. So what transformation do we want to calculate? Well ideally we would use the essential matrix or fundamental matrix if we didn't know the camera parameters to align the two sets of points. And then we could back out of that a six degree of freedom pose transformation. But this is expensive because a, a pose space like this would be six dimensional and to calculate a essential matrix, we would need eight points. So that's a lot. We would have to grab a sample of eight points in order to vote every time. So instead, Lowe uses a simplified transformation consisting simply of a 2D scaled rotation. So in the plane, it's just going to allow a rotation in the plane and a size change, a scaling. So this is cheap to compute because it's only four dimensional. And, uh, and a single feature match actually can determine that transformation because, remember, the features have associated with them a scale and an angle. But this is, of course, only approximation, uh, only valid for planar patches, in-plane rotation, uh, maybe tolerating a small amount of out-of-plane rotation. So then we'll just use a coarse Huff space where the bins are very large. And the purpose is just to identify potentially valid matches we'll calculate a more refined transformation later.